My name is Elizabeth Zaslavska, and I'm a first year student at the Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education at City College. For many years, I've dreamed of becoming a doctor, but in the back of my mind, I always worried. The cost of medical school, as well as the cost of an undergraduate education, were an obstruction in my path. I grew up without a father, and my mother immigrated to the United States from the Soviet Union. There were many reasons for this immigration. For one thing, the Soviet Union was under the socialist regime. There was no freedom of speech, and people were imprisoned simply for speaking their mind. My grandfather went to jail because he spoke his mind about a piece of literature. A government official had written a uh, strongly opinionated article in a newspaper uh, that criticized a novel and its author, and my grandfather disagreed with this. So he wrote a letter to the newspaper praising the merits of the novel. Even though the letter was anonymous, the KGB discovered that my grandfather had written it and he was sent to prison for 10 years. After this incident, my mother's family lived in permanent fear. Besides this, there was official anti-Semitism in the Soviet Union. Jews were denied jobs and positions in prestigious universities simply because of their nationality. And my mother was no stranger to this. She received very high grades in high school and in college, and she passed the exam to postgraduate school with higher marks than many of her colleagues, but she was denied admittance while other underqualified individuals were accepted, and the only reason for this was that she was Jewish. This is why when my mom got the opportunity to immigrate, she took it and never regretted it, but she faced many challenges along the way. She, uh, was, she had a three-year-old son with her and was pregnant with me and had cultural, linguistic, and financial issues which were aggravated by the fact that she wasn't young anymore. People born in America often can't imagine how vastly their culture differs from cultures of other countries. When my mother first came here, she had no one with her. She didn't have family, friends, no one to turn to. And she was put into a hotel. At night, it got very hot in the room, so she tried to open the windows. And she tried and she tried, but she couldn't do it because in Europe, the windows open by pushing out. And she couldn't even imagine that windows could be open by pushing out. <laughs> this is, a, of course, just a minute example. There are many other challenges she faced, big and small, and many sacrifices that she had to make. And my brother and I had to make a lot of sacrifices as well. We never had a TV. We never had new clothes. And if either of us had a doctor's appointment, on the other side of the Bronx, then all three of us would walk several miles to and from the office just to save money on the car on the bus fare. So, of course, growing up, I felt that I would have to sacrifice on many things in life, and that included my education. But my mom always reassured me and told me that as long as I studied very hard, I would be able to succeed. So I listened and I prepared diligently for the specialized high school exam and I got into my first choice, the Bronx High School of Science, an elite public high school that offers a high quality education to all of its students, regardless of their income. While I was at Bronx Science, I took advantage of the many extracurricular activities which were offered. I was a member of the Judaic Cultural Society, I was on the girls outdoor track team, and I was the captain of the women's varsity gymnastics team. In my sophomore year, I learned of the unique and coveted educational opportunity, Sophie Davis. Now, I must stress that I did not come out of the womb knowing I wanted to practice medicine. When I was four years old, I told everyone at pre in my preschool that I wanted to be an attorney. Now, I wasn't exactly sure what being an attorney entailed, but I liked the facial expressions that I got in response from the adults. Then, in fifth and sixth grade, I was certain I wanted to be a spy for the CIA. <laughs> and, but I now know that I wouldn't have made a very good spy because I told this to literally everyone I met. <laughs> like, the moment I met them, I would tell them that. <laughs> and then, at some point in high school, I realized that I had a calling. I had a passion, and I knew that what I wanted to do with my life was to help people in the most important aspect of their lives their health. So I became determined to get into Sophie Davis, and when I did, it was like a dream come true. I would like to take this opportunity to convey my immense gratitude for your support. 
I live in a neighborhood with a high crime rate and a high percentage of disadvantaged families. However, it is nice to see that nature is fair in allocating intellectual and moral qualities among the people. I have a friend who lives in a one bedroom apartment with six other family members. I have another friend with the same situation, but he also has an autistic brother. The first of my friends uh, was the valedictorian of his high school, and the second graduated from Stuyvesant and is now at Yale University studying chemistry. And there are many examples of individuals like this, both in my neighborhood and all over New York City. And it really would have been such a shame if these young people had given up on their dreams just because of financial issues. Thanks to your support, I am now on the path to achieving my own dreams of becoming a caring, compassionate, and well-rounded phys uh, physician. I would specifically like to thank Mr. Bert Brodsky. His encouragement and support has have allowed me to do things in the past several months that I would have never dreamed were possible for me, and for that I'm truly grateful. I would also like to thank Elena, because, because of her all of this is possible, of course. I'd like to end with this. A person's success in life depends not on his socioeconomic background, but rather on what he makes of it. But it is the continuous support of individuals like yourselves which truly makes a difference to a student like me. Thank you.